Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing great. My name is Vlad Kachinescu and I'd like to welcome you to this YouTube series on how to create your SharePoint online intranet. In this first videos, we're just going to do some introductions as well as talk about the agenda because in this series, I'm not alone. I actually have one of my good friends with me, which is Sebastian Levert. How are you doing, Seb? I'm doing amazing. Thanks a lot for having me today. Such a pleasure to uh, reconnect with you. It's been a while since we actually did these uh, workshops, right? Yeah, you're, you're actually already bringing me to the next subject. And why are we even doing this? And uh, let me start. I think there's a few reasons why we wanted to do this, but we've been working together for, I mean, in many different companies for the past like seven years now. Yep. And uh, for three years, we actually were focused on SharePoint Online Intranex. We've, we've seen the transition from classic to modern, how much fun that was convincing customers to go to modern. But we're also doing a workshop together at multiple amazing conferences, such as a SharePoint Fest, a Microsoft 365 conference. We're doing this full, well, it was a half day workshop, I think, yeah, right? Was, yeah. Half yeah. day workshop on how you can create an amazing SharePoint online intranet in only a half day. And then you left me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You, you abandoned me <laughs> to go to Microsoft to work on graftings and other stuff for devs. I'm still here in the, you know, IT pro, uh, end user, power user space. But yeah, since we're not going to do this workshop together anymore, we said, why not just put it out there on YouTube for everybody to enjoy we already have this content prep. We've been doing it for a while. So let's make one awesome final recording of it and then put it out there on YouTube. Absolutely. And I think the community will, will really love what uh, we came up with in a very like simple format of like walk through around the entire SharePoint online space and everything you can do. So definitely, I think it's an easy to to use as a guide when you want to start with SharePoint Online, but also when you want to get better at SharePoint Online, when you want to push your skills a little bit further, um, I think definitely the workshop has everything for everybody, I think, in that case. Definitely. And let me start with the big question. Why would you build a SharePoint on internet? And I mean, all, uh, personally, all of my career has been around SharePoint, which is kind of funny that I, I started when SharePoint was already going up to a stop and it makes me laugh when I still see people. And I think yesterday on Facebook in the big SharePoint group, there's a big SharePoint Facebook group. It has like 35,000 people. And I, I feel like every few months there's somebody that asks, hey, should I learn SharePoint or it's dying? Because people told me SharePoint is dead. Nobody's using it. It's a career dead end. And was it now 250 million daily active users or I forgot what the latest name was, uh, number it's, was. It's insane numbers. That is for sure. And, and is SharePoint dying? I think it's absolutely not the case. It's more like the other way around, actually, when we're looking at all the investments, all the really, really cool stuff that is coming from that team and how also it has been. And I think we're going to cover that a little bit during this uh, workshop is how it now integrates in other products, right? How it, it like really, really connects with Flow or Power Automate, how it, it connects with Power Apps, how it connects with Microsoft Teams, and also how it is so powerful to just share your messages, share your communication, communicate with employees. I don't think there is an easy to use platform that is meant for the enterprise that allows you to do what SharePoint allows you to do, especially now in the, in, in the modern stack for SharePoint, all the tools you need to build a ready to go internet are inside that box nowadays. It's not like you need to go and, and customize everything. There's so much that is already in there 
that you can really have a, an amazing kickstart. And even we're going to have some tools that we're going to talk about later on. How can you even like kickstart that journey? How can you get faster to your goal uh, using some of the resources we're going to have? That's for the end. We're going to yeah. we're going to keep keep the tips and tricks for the end, and we're going to walk you through <laughs> the rest before then. But it's it's definitely the platform to work to to, to build on. And I just want to add, I'm sure there's a lot of people who will listen to this whose last SharePoint experience was maybe on SharePoint 2010, 2013 on-premises because their past employer was either slower to upgrade to the cloud or for various legal, other reasons, not here to judge. But if you've had a bad experience with SharePoint on-premises before, and I'll be the first one to say is that SharePoint was not an easy tool to use. It was always probably one of the most powerful tools that I know. You could literally do everything with it, but it was not always easy, especially for an end user, power user. For me and Seb, whose job was basically 40 hours a week of SharePoint, it was like, yeah, that's easy. You just do this, 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 this. You change this here and it's done. What's the problem? But for users that their day-to-day -day job had nothing to do with tech and then they had to learn all of that, they're like, why me? What did I do to deserve this? But that's where I think it really changed. And keep an open mind, especially if you haven't played with modern SharePoint and the latest stuff. Keep an open mind because... I think the biggest work that Microsoft has done in the past four years on SharePoint is making it easier for end users. It was not a, yeah. like creating advanced features and things like that. There's a lot of that in the back end, but I think the biggest change over the past four or five years was how do we make it easier for everybody to actually use it? And uh, even if, we worked for an intranet in a box before. It was really funny because we always said that our biggest competitor was out of the box SharePoint Online Modern. Yeah. Uh, and uh, instead of people asking us, hey, how do you compare with those other four intranet in a boxes? Uh, more and more people starting us asking, okay, how do you compare with out of the box? Because we, are, we can already create cool stuff out of the box. And I think we're really at the point where you can now create a beautiful intranet without a single line of code. And again, I, I'm not saying that big enterprises that have 10,000 users will find 100% of what they're looking for in out of the box. There's still a huge market for intranet in a box solutions. and. I'm not trying to say that, that that doesn't exist anymore. But what I'm trying to say is, instead of being able to do 10% out of the box and then needing a product or custom dev for the rest of 90%, that balance now shifted where you have 80, 90% you can achieve out of the box. And that will be enough for a lot of organizations that they don't need so many advanced features or they don't have 80,000 users that need 25 languages on five continents. They just want to be able to get communication out there. And I think that's where most enterprises in the world can actually create an awesome intranet without a single line of code. And I think with the, think about how Teams has changed the way teams are communicating together. Um, the beauty is when you create a team, you also create a SharePoint site under the cover. And it also empowers all of these teams to communicate in a really, really beautiful visual way around project milestones and whatever that they're working on right now. Instead of sending an email, they just go to SharePoint and they post the page to the entire team. It creates a record. People can comment on this. It's in the context, but also, it stays there. It, it, it becomes part of the memory of the organization. It's, it's right there and it's striking. It's beautiful. You can really communicate interesting and really tell compelling stories when you're using uh, um, uh, modern internets today where, yes, 
couple of years back, definitely was not uh, the case. And and you, you mentioned it, Vlad. It, it's so easy. You, you don't really need a single line of code. And because of that, it it makes everybody in the organization a page author. Everybody can create pages. And that's really the 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 vision that Microsoft has around um, uh, creating pages and telling stories is everybody has a story to tell. And we don't want to see people to uh, learn the like 700 pages manual on how to do it and how to three day training before being able to post the news. (laughs) Exactly. Now we want just new, new news, start writing up, hit publish, you're good to go. For the enterprise that need more, there's more also. There's like all the, the SharePoint framework stack that exists to add capabilities to SharePoint, add new web parts, add new extensions and these kind of things. But today we wanna to show you that, yes, it is possible to create something that looks great, that has potentially a lot of the requirements you have in mind, and then that you can actually ship it to your organization without involving custom lines of code. And fast. <laughs> and fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've done a bit of introductions on why we're doing it, but what will this series actually consist of? We made, instead of doing actually, well, of course, we've been doing it as a half-day workshop. It was four hours back-to-back. That format doesn't really work for YouTube because we're going to put all of you guys to sleep. And at the end, we're going to speak French. You're not even going to realize it. So we've actually (laughs) split that into 12 smaller videos. This way you can watch it on your own time um, on multiple days. So first one, introductions. We're almost done here. After that, we're going to talk about building your SharePoint Online intranet information architecture. So in this video, we're really going to introduce how modern SharePoint Online uh, information architecture is made and some of the new concepts we have, such as a hub site. Now I know information architecture will depend for everyone. It's not a topic you can usually cover in 20 minutes. So we'll really just do an introduction and then point you to other resources because there is literally books and two hour videos just on that subject. After that, it's going to be a lot of demos. We've always been a fan of doing a ton of demos. So we're going to do a video on how do you get started? How do you create that first site? How do you add a web part, create a new? So really the basics. After that, connecting your SharePoint Online intranet in a hub. So uh, remember the hub site concept I just mentioned? Now I know you might have no idea what that is yet, and that's okay, but we'll cover that. Then we're going to talk about dynamic content. And dynamic content was something that was really before reserved for like custom stuff or products. But now you have so many ways to add dynamic content out of the box. And an internet is always more fun when it's personalized to the person going on it. So we're gonna show you how to do that fully out of the box. Okay, now I need another slide and I need to start over because we got so much content. After that, we're gonna brand our SharePoint Online intranet. And branding is important. Everybody will tell you that it needs to uh, look like the company. So we're gonna show you what's available, what you can do out of the box. Uh, After that, our internet will be in a way kind of already made. So we're gonna take a look at what we can add on top of it to make it even readier for that rollout. So for example, turning on content approvals, that's something that, again, most bigger enterprises will want. Uh, Everybody can submit content, but it needs to go through a content approval whether it's to make sure it fits the standards or just for a simple spell check, we're gonna learn how to do that. How to turn on multilingual. This is again, a topic that we can probably spend three hours on because uh, SharePoint multilingual, I would say, got reborn in the past year and a half. It 
Uh, and we're not going to talk about variations and all of the other fun stuff. And Seb, I mean, worked on a multilingual product for SharePoint on-prem uh, back in the day. So we're not going to talk about any of the old stuff. Uh, we're not even going to mention it existed. We're going to talk about how to do it today. And I mean, there's really cool stuff. Navigations. Absolutely. Uh, navigation can be multilingual, content can be multilingual, and things like that. After that, we're going to talk again, we're going to take it up a notch and talk about the organizational assets library. So if you have a ton of stock photos as a company, how do you actually make them easily accessible in the internet? If you have Word PowerPoint templates that you want people to see directly in Word and PowerPoint on the desktop, how can you enable that? And this is where we might need to get that SharePoint admin in because some of those more advanced features will need an admin. So it's still good that you know what they do and that they exist if you're an end user. But just so you know, there's going to be some PowerShell towards the end of the series. Uh, same thing for the home site. Now, this is a fairly new concept. Again, we're going to introduce what it can bring and why it's amazing. And after that, last two ones, adding a bit of color to the logos here, how to bring it, your intranet to Microsoft Teams. As Seb mentioned, that Teams change the way that people work. And the goal of the communications department in the way and the intranet is how do we make it easy for people to uh, consume the content from where they are. And as people work in Teams, bring, bringing the internet inside Microsoft Teams will really make that adoption a lot easier. So we're going to talk about the easy things that are available today and also some of the preview things that really will take it up a level. And I think uh, a lot of them will require code, the dashboards, the things like that. We're going to introduce them. But I think, again, we can have one, two hours dedicated uh, to that topic. And the final one will just be a tips and tricks and resources on how you can keep your SharePoint Online intranet amazing because the SharePoint Online intranet projects just never end. I mean, uh, we're in the cloud now. Technology keeps evolving and you're not like before where, okay, we've done our intranet on SharePoint 2013. We're set for the next five years until IT upgrades us to the next version of SharePoint. That mentality doesn't work anymore. Microsoft will keep adding new features and users will see them and they're going to be like, hey, I want that. So you need to continuously keep yourself up to date on what's happening and continuously add value to the intranet. So this will keep your users engaged and your intranet will be a lot healthier and alive. So I think this covers the series. Seb, are you excited? I am excited. I can't wait to get my hands dirty and start doing all of those demos and, and breaking intranet sites <laughs> as soon as possible. That's, that's the fun part, the breaking part. <laughs> Okay, well, everybody, that's it for this short introduction video. Uh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, make sure you click subscribe. This way you get notified when uh, new videos come up with Sebastian and uh, many other amazing guests. So thank you very much. And uh, for all of the other videos, if you look at the top right of your screen, you will see the playlist that this video is in. And then you can really go through all of the 12 videos part of this playlist. So thank you very much and see you soon.